uh, and you can find all of his stuff on YouTube. So, um, and he's, I think he also has music you can buy, but um, I'm a millennial, so we don't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So as we are, uh, I think we could probably get started. It looks like we have a pretty good crew going. So the first portion of this, we're gonna watch um, the video that Father Estek and I prepared. If you watched Church at Home um, this past week, you're gonna recognize it, but uh, I encourage you to, to watch it again and join in with that. And then after we do the portion that's gonna be the, uh, the recorded part where Father Estak and I talk, uh, we'll jump into the section where I'll teach live for a portion of it. And then we'll also have a section where we kind of open it up to dialogue. I'm gonna ask that you uh, keep your, I, you do have the ability to unmute yourselves, um, but I am gonna ask that you do that um, uh, after indicating either by raising your hand or uh, waving me down and I'll call on you or um, by uh, saying something in chat and then I'll call on you. I do wanna um, ask that people uh, use the chat function as much as they feel like, uh, you know, if you have a comment during the video, if you have a comment during my uh, question during my talk or a comment at some point, feel free to use the chat function as much as possible. Um, and yeah, so we'll jump right in now. Uh, with a prayer, and then we'll watch the video that Father Estak and I prepared. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, giver of all good gifts, you made man and woman in your own image. You created in us a space of communion, a place of communion. We ask that you would send down your spirit now, that this time might be uh, a time for us to enter into relationship with you more deeply, to experience you more fully, to be filled with you, and to love you. We ask that you would draw us closer to your own heart. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So, if I do this right, then we'll be... Okay. Hello, Father Ed Estock here. Father Joshua Trefney. And welcome to our Church at Home Lent 2021 and our Church Lenten process and ministry and theme, if you will. Cards. Mm -hmm. Great. God bless you. See you next week. Okay, uh, so um, I'm sure some of you had already seen that video uh, for Church at Home for this past week's gospel and everything, but uh, just to keep everybody on the same playing field, I wanted to, we wanted to show that and to be able to talk about it a little bit. Um, so if you have already read the first chapter, that's what I'm going to be talking about, this chapter on why pray in the book, A Quiet Place. Um, if you haven't read it yet, don't uh, feel too bad. Uh, you can just catch up with us in the coming weeks because um, it's, it's not too long of a book. So uh, next week we'll be discussing chapter two, but for this week, um, we really want to focus on this question of why we pray. So I'm going to talk for a little bit, and then I'll open the floor to comments and questions and all of that. Again, if you want uh, to ask me a question during this time, feel free to use the chat function for that. Or, um, yeah, okay. So um, the book uses this kind of uh, the image of planting an acorn, uh, planting a seed and allowing it to grow. Um, and I think that's a great metaphor in a lot of ways when we're using this um, idea of spirituality as um, an experience of growing uh, in prayer. I really think uh, what has struck me most about this was um, 
the comments about uh, in the spiritual DNA section of this, um, this is kind of a spirituality that I have uh, long been a fan of, and this is just one more manifestation of this. Um, Father Bartunik talks about spiritual DNA as uh, it being really necessary for us to be in relationship with God in order for us to thrive as human beings, that our um, innate kind of, that the part of us that needs God is, um, is such a big part of us, it's part of who we are as human beings, that uh, really we can't, uh, not that people can't have successful earthly lives uh, without God, um, well, in some sense they can't, um, but in, you know, they can be, people can achieve things in the world without God, but we can't achieve um, true happiness or satisfaction or uh, espe especially eternal life without being in relationship with God, because there is a need in us to fill that place of communion. Um, and especially going back to that comment that, um, Father Astok made in the video about my homily, um, where there is a God-shaped hole in our hearts. What I think is really important for us in this chapter two, or chapter as well, is for us to really think about the fact that, um, that our baptism, so there's an innate part of every human being um, that, is, that is a God-shaped hole in our hearts. Um, and so everyone has received that um, in their lives. But for those of us who have been baptized, we have received the big, uh, we have received the fulfillment of that. And so we are called to experience our lives in through our baptism. And in our baptism, we are uh, anointed with uh, chrism oil. And that chrism oil uh, represents uh, three anointings that happened in the Old Testament. The first is uh, to be a priest, second is to be a prophet, and the third is to be a king. And so this, um, this anointing that happens in baptism uh, is the beginning of the fulfillment of all of our desires. It is the beginning of this relationship with God uh, that transforms us. And in that very moment of baptism, we become uh, accepted into God's family as sons and daughters of the Father. And so that, uh, that transforms us in a way and allows us to experience God in a way that is different than people who have not been baptized. And that um, in our baptism, in our anointing as priests, it allows us to participate in the shared experience of the sacrifice of the mass. It's why we can all participate in the, the mass together, why our sacrifice, offering our hearts to God, offering our lives to God on the altar is so important because as baptized members of the community, we're all participating together in the worship at the altar. And so we are sharing in that sacrifice of the mass. And we call that the priesthood of the laity. And then what Father Estak and I have is the ordained priesthood or the ministerial priesthood. Um, so, but all of us are, or, are uh, given the priesthood of Christ in the sense of participation in the um, sacramental or in that uh, priesthood, in the, the ability for us to participate in the sacrament of the mass uh, and, and to offer our lives for those that we love uh, and for uh, each other. So that's the priesthood aspect. I'm going to skip the, prof the prophetic and come back to it. The uh, kingly aspect of our baptism allows all of us to stand in the name of Jesus and to speak in his name. So when we are uh, able to stand in that, uh, that kingly uh, authority, we can uh, pray for things. We can, as, G as Jesus says, right? Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, you will receive. That's what he says in scripture. And that is him referring to this, uh, this authority that we have been given. It's literally why we call ourselves Christians. We stand in the name of Jesus. That's what a Christian is, someone who is standing in the name of Jesus, literally, and in the name of Christ, right? So 
that kingly uh, authority that all of us have received is part of our inheritance as sons and daughters of God. And then this prophetic um, in the Old Testament, and maybe you've heard me talk about this before, but in the Old Testament, um, we have uh, just a few people who are given like this prophetic spirit, these people who uh, speak to God directly and receive kind of uh, direct information from God. And that, we, you know, we think of them, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, um, uh, you know, Jeremiah, these big name prophets and some of, the, and you know, the smaller name prophets too, Baruch and all of them. And so these people, right, they're, they're these like kind of few and far between people in the Old Testament that have uh, been given this prophetic ministry to the community. Well, in our baptism, we have all received that prophetic ministry. And so that prophetic ministry not only means that we have to, uh, that we're called to speak the word of God, which is what a prophet does, but primarily it means that we are called to hear the word of God and then to speak the word of God, right? We hear first and then we act. And this is what's so important about this book because uh, there, that inherent part of us that longs for and needs to be in relationship with God, that's what he's telling us, is fulfilled when we live the prophetic in our own lives. When we, uh, when we accept the fact that we have already been given the gift to hear him. I think there's something, you know, that is uh, maybe a little bit hard for Catholics to believe sometimes is that we actually can and are called to hear God's voice in our lives, specifically for us. You know, um, we sometimes think that it's still like the Old Testament, that it is few and far between and there's not many of us who are going to be able to hear God's voice and not many, but, you know, so we listen to, um, not that we shouldn't listen to other people, we should, it, because it's a communal effort. But at the same time, uh, we can actually hear God's voice in our own lives. And to be able to respond to that voice is what prayer is about. So um, we, so this book and this first chapter is really trying to describe to us the, the purpose of prayer. Why do we pray? We pray so that we can hear the voice of God in our lives. We pray that so that we can be in relationship with God. We pray because it's necessary for us to pray in order for us to be fully alive, fully happy, fully um, living the life of a human being. And in prayer, uh, because prayer is, you know, a practice, right? We literally call it the practice of prayer, the model of prayer. You know, this practicing of prayer allows us to open our hearts in new uh, ways so that we can come to hear God's voice um, through different things. Uh, as we'll get into later, uh, you know, some of the different ways of praying, uh, we'll kind of talk through some of them and, and even go through some practicum on them and uh, actually practice some of them. Um, but, you know, different people hear God's voice differently. And that's good because each one of us is a different and unique individual. And God, who is the creator of all of us, knows exactly how uh, we have been made. And so he knows how best to speak to us. And sometimes, so prayer is a process of getting to know ourselves, how we best hear God and how God desires to speak to us. So, you know, for some people that I know, like, you know, let's just look at scripture. There are several people who hear God speaking in scripture through dreams, both of the Josephs in scripture, you know, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We have Paul who tells us, uh, you know, about how he hear, how he literally has a vision of Jesus, a, a external, what we would call, um, uh, uh, why can't I think of the word, just because all of you are watching, of course, but uh, he has a, like an external vision of Jesus, and that vision interacts with him, right? So, and then there are some people who have what we would call internal visions, um, you know, they see it in their mind's eye, and they can uh, experience things with Jesus. They can experience him in prayer. We have people who have locutions, which is when you hear a voice outside of your 
head. We have people who hear God's voice speaking in their head, or sometimes we say, you know, I heard God in my heart, or I, I had a feeling that God was saying, you know, God speaks to each of us in different ways. And so the practice of prayer is coming to experience different types of prayer, uh, such as Lexio Divina and uh, meditation and uh, um, prayer through worship, prayer through uh, community, all of these different prayers are different ways that God speaks to us. So it's a prayer is the practice of coming to listen to God in different ways, to open up our minds and our hearts to experience him in all of the ways that he is speaking so that we can find out where is the place that I hear him best and how can I speak back to him in this conversation, right? Because prayer is essentially a conversation between us and God, um, sometimes individually and sometimes as a group as we'll get to later in the book if you haven't read that far yet. Um, so this, the what I really think is the most important thing about this is that our baptism allows us, actually our baptism guarantees that you have the ability to hear God's voice in your life. Our baptism guarantees that you have the ability to hear God's voice. And so this time of Lent is an opportunity for us to experience that, to grow in that, and to um, hear God in whatever way God is speaking to us. And God speak, you know, uh, a priest that I look up to says, God speaks to us through us. He uses the things in our lives. He uses the natural talents and abilities. He uses our natural dispositions to speak to us. God speaks to us through us. So um, we're going to be learning different ways of praying. We're going to be talking about how we pray and why we pray and all of these things throughout this Lenten season. But the foundation of all of that is that prayer is possible for us. We can hear God's voice. Um, you can hear God's voice speaking to you um, individually and specifically. So that uh, wraps up my little portion. Um, I don't know if anybody has questions, but if you do, I'd uh, be happy to, or comments uh, or whatever. So if you have anything to say, um, just give me a wave or put something in the chat and I'll, um, I will, un uh, or you could, and then you can unmute yourself after I call on you. Yeah, go for it, Rich. Something that I found very difficult for a long time is that, again, you say we all have the ability to hear God in our, in our lives, God's voice. With so much noise in the world, how do we know when it's God who's speaking to us? Or it's me. Um, and is that something that will eventually become more obvious to me as I continue to pray? Yeah, so part of the practice of prayer is coming, is what we would call discernment. So we're choosing between, or we're deciding, we're asking God, we're uh, choosing whether or not something is from God or from uh, ourselves. So in the spiritual life, we say there are three, um, you know, op three oppositions to God. So there's the world, the flesh, and the devil. So the world is like the culture or things that are in opposition to God in the, in like our cultural world, right? So the world, the flesh is our, what we would call our ego, our self uh, reliance, our, um, you know, anything that's kind of internal. I don't know what's going on with my lights today. Um, they're flashing all the time. So, um, so anything that would be like internal kind of dialogue that would be selfish or self-interested um, in, instead of interested in the community, interested in God, interested in, in God's ways. And then there's the enemy, the devil. So we, um, so those three things can kind of be in opposition. And when we look at the spiritual uh, writings of St. Ignatius of Loyola, we see that there are times where some things can appear to be from God, but they're actually not. They're from some of these other sources. 
because we either confuse them, what God is saying with our own um, internal monologue, or we uh, confuse, like sometimes we want something from God and we're unwilling to accept his answer. So we kind of place our own thoughts or answers over um, what God is actually saying. Sometimes the enemy can influence us through temptation or through, uh, you know, different things like that. So uh, yeah, it, it can be a difficult process of kind of discerning and deciding uh, what things come from God and what things don't. My first instinct is always to ask God if this is from him. You know, there are, sometimes we, um, we get a feeling in prayer, we get a we get something in our prayer and we want to um, talk about, or we, we just want to like, like it's the answer that we wanted. So we, we just assume, oh, well, God is just telling me yes to this thing. Uh, so we kind of just run with that without even asking whether it's from God or not. Sometimes we hear in prayer something that we didn't want to hear. And sometimes, and without thinking about it, we just feel defeated or we feel um, like, God doesn't want to give me what I want, or God doesn't want me to do this thing that I thought was a good thing. And we just kind of take that on ourselves, whether that's because of our own woundedness or something from our past or whatever. Um, so what the first thing to do whenever we receive something in prayer is to ask God if it's from him, you know, and it's as simple as just saying, you know, Lord, is this from you? And then waiting for a reply in our hearts, minds, uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, desires, whatever, and seeing what happens there. Now, of course, that leads you down a rabbit hole if you just ask more and more times, uh, you know, this, you know, was that one from you? Was that one from you? You know, okay, fine. You could do that. But um, I find that the, oftentimes the, when, as we grow in the life of prayer, it becomes easier and easier for us to hear what is from God and what is not from God. Um, and it become, because we become more aware of ourselves as we grow in prayer, we kind of see, oh, you know what? I think that was just me being a little bit selfish about this thing. Oh, you know what? I think that was that, you know, if I really think about that and look at it with the scriptures, that doesn't really seem like something God would do. You know, we kind of grow in the practice of, of discernment. So the first thing is to ask God. And the second thing is to practice. As we continue to grow in our prayer lives, um, we, we become better at hearing God's voice and distinguishing it from the other voices. Uh, you know, just as the sheep um, hear God's voice, we kind of get that uh, direct voice from God. Yeah. I'm going to, I see there's some stuff in our chat function. So let me just take a peek at that. Oh yeah. The, I pre the uh, Lenten or someone made a comment about um, the comment imagery. I did, and I ended up preaching on that this past weekend. So if you're interested, you can go back and watch that homily. Um, I really enjoyed preaching that. So I don't, I think other people enjoyed it too, but I really enjoyed it myself. So thank you for sharing that. Um, are children who are raised with prayer and church at, at an advantage and able to pray intuitively? Um, well, I think that there are uh, some people who have a natural disposition to prayer um, because they, in everyone has a, a certain disposition towards prayer, right? It's necessary for our lives. Um, are there some people who are, I think, innately gifted in certain ways? Yeah, I mean, there's some people like you get your trees of Avila's, your John of the Crosses, your people who are these big heavy hitter spiritual masters. And yeah, like there is different uh, levels of gift, gifting to different people. But I think that um, oftentimes, uh, I wouldn't say that, I mean, I would of course say that it is important to teach our children to pray, to bring our children into church. 
but I wouldn't say that they, um, I wouldn't say that they can achieve anything greater than someone who comes into the faith later. Um, it is about our, uh, our, all of it is about our willingness to allow God to work in our lives. And so if we do that at any point in our lives, it, God is going to do something with that. And so if I, I don't want to say that someone has an advantage over someone or that it's some kind of competition. It's not a competition. We're not, um, we are not competing against each other. We are a community that supports and loves one another. So our, um, our competition isn't against each other. It is for each other. So, um, yeah, so the, I wouldn't say that one, you know, that someone has an advantage over someone else or that there's uh, something like that. But I will say that, um, yeah, it's important for us. I think the earlier that we teach people how to pray, how to grow uh, in the spiritual life, probably the easier it's going to be for them. So in that sense, there is an advantage to doing it younger. Um, Susan, would you like to share that uh, in, in the video, the comment that you made? Or was that just for me? Would you like to unmute yourself? Okay. Oh, there you go. All right, go for it, Susan. Well, I wasn't expecting to talk. Um, I just wanted to make that comment because sometimes I think, like in the case of the guy in Chicago, his life was really kind of falling apart and he, you know, finally realized he should maybe, you know, or he thought to go to God for help. And it didn't, the help didn't happen overnight, but he slowly felt like he could cope. If you look at that particular example, I thought it was excellent. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not always going to, you know, hear, you know, you don't really hear God saying, okay, Susan, do this. That's all I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's so true. And that's another reason that the example of the acorn in that uh, first chapter is such a good one because that um, a tree, right? You know, in the beginning of our prayer life, we often seem to be growing by leaps and bounds. Um, and then, you know, it can seem like it slows down, but the tree keeps growing, you know, for hundreds of years, if you get the right kind of tree and it looks imperceptible, but when you come back to it, after being away for a while, it can have changed dramatically. I mean, the same thing is true in all of our lives, right? As we, um, as we, you know, grow and change in our lives, friends that see us every day don't notice, but those people who see us rarely or, um, you know, uh, that we, you know, maybe don't see for a couple years, so they might, we might meet up with them and uh, have lunch and, you know, they think, you know, it seems like totally different people because, uh, change is often a slow process in our lives. And the same can be true of prayer. Although there are times where people do experience, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to limit God by saying that change is always slow because it's not. Uh, St. Paul, uh, you know, like experienced this uh, huge transformation through a vision uh, with Jesus, and he transformed the world through his preaching, um, and there have been countless others through the, throughout the history of the world that have experienced those things, so um, God knows the best way to talk to us, right? God knows the best way to communicate, so for some of us, change happens slowly, and for some of us, it happens quickly, um, so both are possible, and both are good, so I don't want anybody to feel left out if they had one or the other. Um, any other comments or questions? Okay. One of the things I have realized when listening to God that I tend to hear him best in retrospect. I pray for something 
and normally experienced that uh, and normally experienced that he was listening all along. How do you figure out how he is talking to you more in the present moment? That's a great question. So how do we how do we hear God in the moment? Um, so uh, there are all sorts of ways, right, that God speaks to us in the moment. Um, sometimes through uh, sometimes through specific uh, scripture passages that move our hearts. Sometimes through actually, like I said, hearing or experiencing these things. Um, part of it comes from um, oftentimes we experience in prayer things that we that are from God that we dismiss as ordinary things. Um, you know, random thoughts, uh, feelings in our body, uh, emotions or changes of emotions, things like that while we're praying and we sometimes dismiss them as distractions. We sometimes dismiss them as just uh, a normal like part of our lives or whatever, you know, I'm just thinking about that randomly. You know, we just kind of move past them. And oftentimes those things are uh, the voice of God speaking to us, whether through, you know, thoughts, feelings, desires, whatever it is. And we can um, dismiss them as though they were uh, not from God. Uh, so part of the practice of prayer is listening and going into that quiet place and, and discerning what is from God and what is not from God. So, um, so the quick answer to how do we figure out how he is talking to us in the moment is to practice prayer more. Uh, the more detailed answer is that um, we have to try to hear God's voice. And so um, I'm going to go through some, in the coming weeks, we're going to go through some practices of prayer, some different forms and models of prayer. And I think one of the things that uh, what one of the things that I would like to do is some prophetic activations. So, an activation is really just a pra uh, like a practicum, a moment of praying in a specific way, a uh, kind of guided uh, way. So, I think what we'll do in the coming weeks is is uh, take an opportunity to uh, to step into the prophetic, uh, which right. So the word prophet is to hear God. Uh, and to do it and to obey God. So we are going to um, step into that and to hear uh, kind of, I'll give you some guided opportunities to hear God's voice, to ask him specific questions, and then to uh, try to hear the answer and, um, and some kind of uh, easy kind of ways for us to learn how God is talking to us, because it's going to be different for each one of us. Like I said, you know, some of us will see visions or hear God's voice in our heart or have an emotional response or whatever um, it is. And so uh, these kind of um, activations or practicum kind of things will give us the opportunity to kind of discern those in our own lives so that we can um, kind of see and grow in whatever way God is calling us to. So. Stick around for that and we'll, I would do some now, but I think we only have a few minutes left. So I don't wanna, um, you know, keep us too late tonight. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yeah, Bob, you know, Bob, I think, thanks for those comments. I, I share a lot of thoughts like Rich did early on, but I, I think over time, some people, um, it's been a wonderful thing to have, a, if possible, a spiritual director and I, um, to, to guide those, because like a lot of times, like, uh, uh, people get, get thoughts, like you said, and to bounce that off someone of, that's trained to do that. And, uh, and then in the instance, I think many of us uh, years ago, Father Tessick was one of those people in my life and for seven years, and then he abruptly was gone with a stroke. And so, it was, a, it was a big challenge to have that person sort of removed from your life. And, uh, but then the, the Lord just sort of popped up like uh, writings from St. Alphonsus Liguri, just different things to, you know, just came out of nowhere. I wasn't even looking for it. And sometimes some of those answers to reaffirm you're on the right track or not. So, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, a spiritual director or is a great um, thing to have in your life if you uh, would like. I wouldn't say that everyone needs a spiritual director, um, but 
you know, people are certainly welcome to find one or if you'd like one. Uh, I would say more important than a spiritual director in every person's life is spiritual friends. Um, people that you trust with your heart, people that you are able to talk with who pray with you. For some of you, that's gonna be your spouse. Um, I hope between spouses it is, you can do that. <laughs> uh, but you might need other people as well. You don't always need to only have your spouse as your spiritual friend, because it's not, a, it is not, you know, to be in a spiritual friendship with someone is a matter of prayer. It's not a matter of romance or a matter of uh, attraction. It's a matter of prayer. So um, to have someone in your life that you can talk to, or more than one, who you can talk to about spiritual matters, who's willing to pray with you and for you um, is so important. So thank you uh, for that. Um, yeah, that we can. So yeah, if you're, uh, if you are in a place in your life where you're looking for a spiritual director, you're more than welcome to reach out to me or for me to for me to speak with you about that or to ask me for names of people that I trust and know who could direct you spiritually. Um, and if you, you know, uh, if you don't have spiritual friends in your life, um, I would suggest that we start looking around in these groups. You know, the people who are part of this are people who are interested in the spiritual life, who want to grow together. And, um, you know, I'm sure that many of us would be willing to start up a spiritual friendship with each other. So, um, you know, we can kind of move through that as we uh, hear each other talk and comment and see who resonates with us and all of that as time goes on. But, um, you know, start praying about that and seeing what the Lord might be putting on your heart as far as that. Well, that is our time. For this week, uh, we'll be back next week um, with round two, chapter two of A Quiet Place. And that's going to talk of, uh, about some of the, uh, what is prayer? So we're going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of what prayer is, the different kinds of prayer that happen. And we'll dive into some of the practicum on that as well. Um, so thank you all so much for joining me. I'm going to we'll pray a final prayer and a blessing and be on our way. All right. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this time. We ask you to fill up that place in us that longs for you with your life, your grace, your spirit, that we would be able to hear you in this coming week that we would experience you in new ways as we enter the quiet place of our hearts and look for you. We ask all of this in the power of your spirit and in the name of your son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, guys. God bless you. God bless you, Father. Good Thank night, you. everyone.